Hello, this is Caleb with God's Loving Sacrifice Podcast, where we talk about the Word of God and how it helps us get through today's world. I hope you learn and grow as you listen. Today, we're going to talk about unconditional love. But first, we're going to talk about tolerance, because I think that a lot of people have mixed up the two, tolerance and unconditional love. Um, I found a saying from Billy Graham that he did on tolerance and intolerance. I thought it was really good for what we're talking about today. He said, one of the pet words of this age is tolerance. It is a good word, but we have tried to stretch it over to great an area. We have applied it too often where it does not belong. The word tolerant means liberal and broad-minded. In one sense, it applies the compromise of one's convictions, yielding of ground on important issues. We have become tolerant about divorce, use of alcohol, delinquency, wickedness in high places, immorality, crime, and godlessness. We have been sapped of conviction, drained of our beliefs, and we are bereft of our faith. And that's true. Tolerance has nothing to do with love. And if you really think about it, Jesus was pretty intolerant. Think about his incident at the temple. Think about the way he talked about the Pharisees and the scribes. He was very intolerant. But he's intolerant about things that we need to be intolerant about. But the one thing that he said that we all needed to do was to love. And like I said, love has nothing to do with tolerance. First Peter 4, 7, and 8 says, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Tolerance doesn't cover sin. Tolerance accepts sin, agrees with sin. I had someone tell me that we shouldn't talk about love, that we should talk about punishment and hell. I talked about this before. But the one thing that she did say is you need to tell people about their sins. And we do. And that's what love does. We do all things in love. We're intolerant, but we're intolerant with love. 1 John 3, 1 says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. So those people don't understand our love. They don't understand that when we are intolerant of sin, We are intolerant of sin because we love them. We want to see them saved. We're not intolerant of sin because we're just mean, hateful people. It's totally the opposite. We love, and we love you enough to let you know what sin is. We want to teach you the way Christ wants us to live. Before I go into this, these are going to be long scripture readings, because this is such an important thing. And I want to say everything that Jesus says and what God wants us to know about love. First John 4, 7 through 19 says, Behold, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifest toward us that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. 
and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we have boldness in the day of judgment, because he is, so are we in this world. Therefore, is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. And this is one of the things that is so important to realize that we don't have to fear hell. We don't have to fear death. We don't have to fear Satan. We don't have to fear hell. I think I said that twice, but it probably needs to be said twice because we have love and love casts out fear. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Christians, good Christians, all do things wrong. That's why every day we repent of the things that we've done wrong. And why do we do that? Because we're human. God knows what he made us. God realizes we're human. He realizes that we struggle sometimes with temptations because so did he. But his love, when it abides in us, it covers a multitude of sin. Everyone knows that love is one of the fruits of the Spirit. It's one of the things that God spoke about so much. It's the one commandment that he gave us, is to love your neighbor as yourself. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I have become of a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long, is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is part will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know as I also am known. And now abide faith hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. This is one of the scriptures that I love and I'm reminded of quite often. If you go to your back door and it's dark outside and you have a light on and you look at the door, you see yourself. So you can only know the part that you see. You can't know the part that is hidden. And at some point in time, When we die in ourselves, that light comes on and we see everything. The next time it's dark out, go to your door. Turn on the light on the inside. See yourself. Turn your light off. Turn the light outside on and see how much more you see. That is so telling about how we only see in part. And we will only know as we are known when the perfect has come. And that perfect is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one that gives us that love. Romans 8, 31 through 39 says, What then shall we say to these? Is God for us? Who can be against us? 
he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how should he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Is it God who justifies? Who is he that condemns? Is it Christ who died and furthermore is also risen? Who is even at the right hand of the Father who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are all killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are made more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor the things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Think about that. Nothing can separate us. None of the things that we go through can separate us. You know, so many times, and this is something I was thinking about doing a podcast on, and I still may, but I think it's good to bring it up here. So many times we have things happen in our life that we think is just such a tragedy. One of the things that happened to me is my husband had just got sick. I had just started into college, and I lost my job. And I cried and I cried and I can't believe that God would allow me to go through this. And it was just such a horrible thing to happen. I had plans. I was going to keep working. I was going to take care of my husband. I was going to get out of college. I was going to move up at my job. Even though I was much older, I still had plans for my life. And now that years have passed since I lost my job, I ended up losing my husband. And losing that job was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. My husband lived three years. After I lost that job, I got to spend a wonderful three years with him. So sometimes we can't see what God has for us. We can't see his reasoning. We can only see in part, and that's okay. One day it will be revealed. It may not be in this lifetime, but some things will be revealed in this lifetime. And for me, that was revealed to me. And now instead of wondering why I lost a job that I love, I thank God he gave me those three years for my husband. He knew what I needed more than I do. He knew what needed to happen in my life. And he did it with such great love. John 15, 9 through 17 says, As the Father loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I've heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me but I chose you and appointed that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. And that's what we need to do. We need to love one another. What greater love has a man than he lays down his life for his friends? And that's what Jesus Christ did for us. Remember, When people are telling you that, well, you don't love me because you don't like what I do. Just remember that tolerance and love are not the same thing. In some things, we must be intolerant. But in everything, we must love. I pray that you enjoyed today's episode. 
If you have any comments or questions, you can leave a message by contacting me on the website at www.godslovingsacrifice.com. And while you're there, you can catch up on all the other episodes, check out the reviews, and even read the blog. You can also leave a comment on Facebook at God's Loving Sacrifice. Thank you for spending time with us today. And until next time, may God richly bless and keep you.